Hey folks, Whip here, and welcome on back to my hardcore Minecraft world. Currently on day 1,432. Minecraft 1 1.19 is finally here, which means it is time to do a final 1.18 world tour and download available for everybody who's a Patreon supporter or member of my main YouTube channel. Join the Discord, link up your accounts, you'll get the download in there. But with that, I am very excited to look back on the projects we have done over the last 1,400 something days with our starter house right here. The entire world started from this little house, which now is a constant mess of shulker boxes in here. My old furnace array in there. All of the barrels are full of random things. So I got to take this over to the new lumber storage building. And my storage room is in here. It's, uh, it's a bit cramped. We've even started ducking things in underneath the stairs where all of my stone and cobblestone are stored in shulker boxes. Up to the second floor, we've got the bedroom. We've got the extra elytra. We've got a clock so I can know if I can sleep or not and just random goodies and things in here. I've got my little map room over there. Speaking of which, we've got to update the map today. Super excited to do that in an attic space I never used. If you've got any ideas, it looks like it's ready for some attic house parties but let me know what you think in the comments. Going across the bridge that we have, we have our enchanting tower where we've got a lot of enchantments to get started with many, many of Fortune 3 coming from this table here. And we've got a few books and lapis ready to go if we need them. Speaking of which, is there impaling in here? No, no impaling. I need impaling. From there, we moved on to creating our first field as well as our first mining area, which I'm still actually using today for every single mineral that I pull from this earth is down in this section, which I absolutely love. We've got, you can see it right here, water elevator bringing items all the way up from different mining levels. And we've got our cave cats in here. Hi, Jelly, how you doing? And all of those items from the water elevator are brought into these chests here, which are very unsorted. And then I've got a little bit of area for smelting any copper back in the day and just some extra storage. But the way this thing works, we get in the minecart, we go down with a very simple system of just powered rails turning back and forth. And then it stops us where we have some unpowered rails right here. Next thing you do is you press the button, it activates those, and if you're in the minecart, you're holding W, looking whichever way you want to go. Super duper simple. Over here, we've got the little hookups on every single level, so you can see it going all the way down to bedrock at negative 59. And all I do is if I'm mining in here, come and drop everything in there, and it meets me up at the top when I'm finished. It's pretty much carbon copied all the way down, so we don't need to go down there. To the next up, however, on episode three, we built a castle. Yeah, I, I know. Episode three, we built a castle. It's pretty cool. But that is all the way over here. Before we even had any netherite, before the elytra, I was like, you know what would be fun? Let's build a castle. So we built this thing here to house the world map, and it's very fantastical, but I love it. This bridge, yeah, the legs are a little short we skipped leg day here but that's fine i think this thing looks so cool and it really was a staple piece of this hardcore world to get started that i absolutely loved during that i also started adding in some gravestones for some friends who died inside of their own hardcore worlds unfortunately there's quite a few of them now but inside of the castle now it's very much just decorative and you can see through the window over there we've got the world maps this was updated on episode 12 just finished episode 16 working on 17 and that is the original one before right after we built the starter house and the mine so that was episode two before we built the castle on episode three we've got to update this entire thing here today and i've got the maps ready to go thankfully so i need to go trade for some more but before we do that let's head down to the dwarven trading village also we did build this entire little creek river thing flowing down from the mountains that goes all the way through this section actually completely out to the ocean which i love a big goal i set in this world is that everything will be connected whether it's via a road a waterway some sort of transportation system i want there to be clear markers that allow you just to travel around this world and keep exploring because i just absolutely love that creating a world full of life speaking of which we have this crazy cave transformation down here which i just love so very much episode four we came through and built up that entire thing and it is very very cool and then later on when i wanted to finish it i think about episode 12 or so we built the rest of it over here finishing off the entire cave adding in the lake and just finalizing everything 
this place is extremely important as we've got the villager breeder in there over inside of this building in here i've got all of my stone masons ready to go for the trading there anytime i need to get more golden carrots we pop over into this building where i've got farmers galore up the staircase we go to the second layer where inside of here is the emerald making machine of our librarians and our cartographers which while we are here i need to buy a bunch of maps thank you Can't remember how many I need, but uh, hopefully 36 is enough because those are not cheap. Moving all the way up to the top level, I want to do something that really emphasizes the dwarves. So we built this crazy looking anvil out of copper and deep slate. And then inside of here behind the massive doorway, still haven't fully flushed this area out because I haven't really needed to make more tools yet. But we've got all of our toolsmiths ready to go to trade us crazy diamond tools for one and five emeralds or some just like outside of there. It's so easy. It's so, so easy. Diamond pickaxes for one emerald. Absolutely absurd. Outside of that, this building over here with the big old white tower sticking out of it turned into place for our clerics so that we can start trading for a bunch of redstone as well as a few of them trade us ender pearls and we still have a few stalls left to go that i can throw them in but i actually don't think i have space back here so maybe that's just decorative yeah we'll use it if we need that whole area over there currently is just decorative as well but inside of here the door is right over here definitely walk in here all the time we have the super smelter, which is so amazing. I absolutely love this thing. Can smelt an entire double chest worth of items in like eight minutes, I think. So it goes very quick. I know I said this whole side was decorative, but it actually does lead somewhere very important. The Amethyst Geode Mining System, which I love. We've got another warp field over there above this giant aquifer that we created. But inside of here, I have one geode fully exposed with the minecart ready to go. A second geode right around the corner. And if we take this minecart, we can get a great view of the dwarven village as we're going through entering into this giant dark wall that's just again decorative and that pops us down into third geode right here which continuing on goes all the way down to number four so if we ever need tinted glass moving forwards we've got plenty item frames going up on the wall and i've got the whole old copy of the world map here ready to go for ourselves before we continue on with the tour of the rest of the world it is time to update this entire map With all the maps ready to go, we need to copy every single one of them down. Then take one of those and lock it back in. All of the lock copies are going to go up here on the wall. Then the next ones are going to go back in the chest ready to be used for the next update. And here we have it. The final maps are ready to go on the board. We'll get a sign up here in a moment, but check that out. The world tree is shining bright. The new lumber mill is in there and all of the new roads. Look at that versus that oh we have managed to do a lot since episode 12 and it hasn't even all been around this area if only there was a way to make a map of the underground areas as well i know that doesn't logically apply to a top-down map but it would be cool to see the dwarven cave on there continuing on with the tour now that we've got the maps updated in here we have our sugarcane farm i absolutely love this building doing something a little bit more fun with the colors and we'll come back in and decorate it eventually inside of here we've got a pretty simple sugarcane farm that uh does the trick to keep my rockets stocked but not much more than that the pathway also forks off down here into this cavern which i absolutely love this was the first crazy project i really attempted in here as i developed an absolutely absurd nether portal with a massive stained glass floor causing everything just disappearing into a fog and i love it so very much this is a project i've been wanting to do for years and i finally worked up the courage to do it and i'm very happy and it's a great way to practice my flying skills as i try to fly on out of here ah oh, got hit okay it's fine next up we've got a little stables building in here for our horse donkey and mule to hang out in this building we've got our animal barn so we used to have a lot of sheep in here and a lot of pigs in there and a lot of them got dispersed elsewhere but we've got our cows out here hanging out i really love the barn feel to the structure with the open air second loft i think it's just a really cool touch the final building in our starter base section is what are you doing in here buddy 
just stay very still. Oh, he's moving again. But we've got our netherite forge in here where I'm making all of my netherite tools and armor as the series progresses. We've got some diamond ore because I just found them and thought they looked pretty and just a little workstation area out here. Eventually, the goal is to have this entire world decorated like this to where it feels like a living, breathing city environment. Over here, we've got a chicken coop, which you can kind of get access to right in there. And it's made a decent amount of eggs. I never really use them, so it's OK. Back this way, we've got a doghouse for our two puppers well three puppers now but we've got geo and sky and their little baby if you hadn't noticed it already we have the giant world tree up here this is a project that i've also been wanting to do for years and i finally decided to take the time to do it and i want to come back and improve on it even further by stretching the branches out even farther to make the canopy of this tree even more insane but that'll be coming in the future for now i'm very happy with the result of it it took an entire month to build so uh I think being able to improve it again later on, that's okay with me. Another very important tree in this world is the burb tree, full of many a burb. Sleeping and continuing our journey off in the morning into the farmland region, where you can hear some pistons firing for what I'm assuming is broken again, is the bone meal and moss farm. Let's see, is it broken? Oh, it's definitely broken. Look at all that cobblestone and we're out of bone. Okay, I just, I'm gonna just turn it off for now. It's just, um, I need a better solution to that. It's very, very broken, breakable breaks all the time I hate it down here we have all of the fields where I plant one field in every single episode and I absolutely love growing this place over here we actually did a few fields at once because I wanted to create an auto potato farm as well as over here we have an auto carrot farm but the problem is is somehow the villager in here keeps dying I don't know how because I can't figure out how the zombie keeps getting in there this dude's alive look at him he's great he's been there since we first set up the farm we're on like villager number five over here beyond that we got a little grain silo of sorts and a few flowers fields back here just because they're pretty i did recently change them out for rooted dirt and coarse dirt like i had done on that field and i'm very happy i made the changes past a few custom trees over here and as well as a few little flower fields we've got a vineyard of sorts because i didn't want to do any flowers or crops as inside of this building we have a bee farm so all of the honeycomb i ever could use for wax and copper is right inside of here all of these bees are hanging out and they've produced uh they produced a decent amount of honeycomb i will find a way to use the block eventually but right now i have no idea there was definitely a lily pad on here. I don't, I don't know what happened to it. That all being said, before we go too far down the mountain, let's jump up here to my latest build, the lumber storage building in a sawmill. I absolutely love it. Over here, we've got a bunch of chopped down trees and little baby trees growing up in saplings and whatnot. And we got a cart leading over to an area that I want to come back and decorate some more, but I just haven't found the inspiration for how I want to do that quite yet. So it's a little bland in here, but the inside I absolutely love. Eventually this copper is going to age all the way down. We've got all of the log storage in here, and then all of the wooden goodies are stored over here behind their respective signs with some overflow barrels and whatnot back in here. So that'll help take care of a lot of the mess the back of this one also does hold a water mill which i absolutely love and i do want to come and decorate this area again even more probably some mossy carpets along there and just some more life inside of the river itself we've got a crazy windmill sticking out the top of the structure just trying to make it feel very industrial and that things are happening here and that there's a lot of movement in the build honestly one of my favorite builds in this entire world moving on to another one past a bunch of farmland we can head on down here to where i have my auto sheep farm we've got one of every single type of sheep in here all hanging out just producing a bunch of wool automatically and i love this thing it works out very well because i don't use wool all that much so the slow trinkle in whenever i'm in the world is actually pretty nice some more custom fields just to help this area feel a lot more immersive and everything as you're walking around the lily of the valley flower field that was absolute pain to make but it's beautiful then down here we have the house of the fishing with whip podcast one episode in but more are coming i promise so we've just got a little dock in here with some a few boats that are supposed to be in here i don't know where they went maybe the turtles stole them and a nice little house to hang out in as you would need and want to and whatnot we got a big old fishy i don't know how that got fished up out of this lake but it did just trust now i do live stream from this world a good chunk as well so we recently built up this crazy looking tree over here that i actually i really love it's a brand new type of tree design for myself i usually don't go with like the branches and a big leaf or just separate canopies but i'm really happy i took on the challenge i absolutely love this tree and i want to make more like it and a big shout out to vigo man for the idea of putting little candles as if they're flowers blossoming on top of it i think that looks beautiful then we also did build up this cool little farmhouse over here i want to continue this as a stream project 
adding in a few more houses so be sure to stop by those if you want to help me come up with the ideas for building this thing it's got a little shed back here and a custom birch tree with a uh, moss on log slowly i'm even doing all of the interiors of every single one of the buildings inside this world so we've got a really tight cramped space in here for two people to live in little bunk beds and things as they're tending to the fields i thought it was a really cool touch now the road did split off from over there heading to spawn where there's that purple stuff and a cactus farm which we'll get over to shortly then the other direction comes over here to where i wanted to build a massive village almost like a little mini peninsula or island of sorts out here i just thought it was too perfect to not include a village so we got some flower fields again with the ground foliage changed out from being grass blocks to the rooted dirt and coarse dirt and it looks so good we've got like a wagon maker's house in here just a general home in there uh no interiors on these quite yet then this big old massive structure you have to walk underneath which is a stables connected up into an inn and tavern and everything like that it's got a huge amount of space on the interior so i'm very excited to get to decorating this one eventually even with a separate building right back in there to be the kitchen a lot of these places lead under underneath the buildings out into tiny places for some locals to live and everything like that so just little farmhouses and you can continue down into the market which was recently redecorated and just added a lot more detail into this place before it felt a little bland on the first run through and I think it's totally okay to come back and redesign things inside of my Minecraft world and I think you should be okay with that inside of your own as well because there's a lot of ways that you could just add so much more life into what you're doing so I'm very very happy with the changed result of this one over here this is supposed to be like a sail makers workshop we don't really have an interior to it yet but it does have an outdoor workstation where they're making like a gray sail right now under this cool covered section with quartz and red sandstone moving down past the cat army we've got a few more houses down here as well as the docks with a bunch of custom fishing boats which these designs actually came from my own community i asked my members community to send over a few designs and i picked a bunch of them and just threw them in here to help decorate the river and i'm really really happy i did that right in here we had the storage room for the docks as well as the storage room that i actually used while I was building this entire place so there are some random goodies and things just thrown around here Ooh, that's a lot of good stuff wow even more oh I need to do tours more often wait look at what oh I definitely need to do tours more often oh I'm coming back for these I don't have space I'm coming back even look at this quartz that's some valuable stuff and I just left it in a random barrel who am I mythical sausage moving on we've got another little house over here that's really cool then we've got a little cul-de-sac of sorts which a few houses are kind of surrounding they've got a well in the middle some outdoor storage and just some cool stuff going on well again uh interiors work in progress coming along the road again however we've got even more custom trees with a brand new design that i absolutely love with oak leaves and andesite walls as like a skinny tree trunk i think turned out really really cool now this whole area down here is super decorated out the only thing it's missing is some small drip leaf oh we have small drip leaf maybe i just need some more right over here but i love creating the custom riverbed environments i think it just looks so good to have this all down here contrasting to the more landscaped area where the people are planting their fields and everything i want the points of nature to be so lush and just overflowing with life we've got a bunch more custom trees over here as well as a really cool little wagon to be a decorative piece down here we have the gatehouse which is kind of protecting the river and everything like that keeping this to a very closed environment and if they needed to they could stop people from coming across because it's also a drawbridge over here this is one of my favorite views in the world especially with the new build up there and everything like that seeing the world tree seeing the town and everything coming together i'm just so very happy with how this hardcore world has progressed so far i think it's absolutely amazing but let's sleep to keep the creepers away please ah there we go continuing on the road i spawned into this world right here well technically right where those torches are this marks the four spawn chunks that you can spawn in when you join the game and we were somewhere right in here with that we built up a cactus farm because i thought that would work in spawn chunks that would have been a bad fall it definitely doesn't so I gotta redesign that somewhere else soon inside of here we've got our iron farm which does work in spawn chunks so I built a like ruined manor or mansion around it that I absolutely love but we are literally overflowing on iron look at all of those blocks blocks of blocks of iron any bone meal <gasps> bone meal why is this more bone meal than my bone meal farm can produce I don't know that's just ah ah stupid bone meal farm here's Harry 
He's my donkey. He's stuck in this crack. But this build over here with the iron farm really started to add some lore into this world where somehow there's this magic purple essence powered by a lot of these amethyst crystals down here that is almost like rejuvenating structures and holding onto the form of them. And I'm really excited to move on further with adding more and more of that into the world and just creating some stories for ourselves because you can see that's even holding the tree together and the two separate parts of the world tree. Now, the lumber mill that we also created, I did bring this entire custom river down here connecting all the way into the lake which then if the lake were to overflow it actually has a way to kind of drain and move into the main river area if this were to come through here and the water levels raise and everything like that I just thought it was really cool detail but that was pretty much everything here inside of the starter building area <laughs> we also do have a raid farm over here as a form of like Stonehenge of sorts that's just a very default raid farm it doesn't get the bajillions of emeralds per hour that you see on some of the raid farms but it does get totems so uh I think that's more important after seeing everything in there what do you all want to be seeing next inside of this world we're headed down into the nether portal again because I've got a few other places to show y'all some crazy projects I'm still in the works on the nether is scary so I did break a hole into the nether roof and I'm totally okay with that I think it was very important we did it with the little bedrock breaking method and eventually I do want to get an even larger hole but we've got the gas farm in here which um yeah that thing took me like 20 hours to make guess what's breaking in 1.19 the gas farm yay oh boy over to the next project that also took upwards of 50 hours to make recently I drained an entire ocean monument so we could start doing some cool building projects around here and then as soon as I finished draining it I was like nah I I need to do a different project this is that's it's so big so we built the lumber mill and I love it but now we do have all of the prismarine I could ever need which is absolutely fantastic look at the guardians die in there oh that's great oh that's not great why is that why why aren't those getting picked up excuse me oh I'm missing hoppers on this entire row that makes a lot more sense that that makes a lot more sense I will fix that in a minute I can actually fix it right now I don't think we need these these are little extra guys all the better there we have it 1440 days survived in hardcore Minecraft if you would like to get a download of this world it is available to Patreon supporters and YouTube members on the main channel not here on flip 2 just as an FYI so far we have used the netherite pickaxe 182,000 times netherite shovel is at 105,000 we've almost placed 100,000 sand nearly 60,000 on the diamond pickaxe as well absolutely absurd with 50,000 uses on the axe because of the mega tree and we're really really getting up there over 106,000 stoned mined and most importantly 12.68 days of play time which comes out to 304.3 hours survived inside of this world that is absolutely insane my friends but thank you all so very much for watching hope you enjoyed the world tour what's been your favorite thing so far in this world and what are you wanting to see me do next i'm thinking we transform this little island over here seems like a great place we had a lot of trees maybe we do a forest i don't know just kidding i do know i already have the entire next episode planned out oh my gosh spoilers on the second channel be sure to subscribe to flip 2 if you have not already my friends i would love to hit 100,000 subscribers on this channel so i really do appreciate it but with that my friends i'll catch y'all on the flip side